Sound design. All right, so how loud does the test signal need to be in the room for Sat Live? Well, I want to tell you a couple of ways to think about that. First of all, we need to know what our noise floor is because at minimum, we need to be just above the noise floor across all frequencies that we want to measure to make sure that we can get good data. Now, if we want to get maximum coherence and get data that we can really trust well, then we want to try and be 20 dB above the noise floor. And as you can see, in the high frequencies, that's normally not going to be on the problem. But in the low frequencies, that might be a little bit more tricky. So let me show you what I mean. So right now we're looking at the microphone in the room. And if I stop talking uh, and take a measurement, you'll see that in the high frequencies, it's pretty quiet. But in the low frequencies, as cars drive by outside and stuff, it's pretty high. So I'll stop talking and take a measurement. Okay, so there's our noise floor. And now I'll turn on the test signal. Let me turn it down a bit. So I'll start from really low, barely audible, and I'll slowly turn up the test signal until we start to get above the noise floor. All right, so here's minus 20 dB, the signal generator at minus 20 dB. And as you can see, we're already above the noise floor through most of the frequency spectrum all the way down to 100 hertz. It's going to be below here where we're even going to need a lot less noise in the room or a lot more volume. So let's take the next step though and see how much volume we're going to need to get 20 dB above the noise floor. And the way I need to do that then is to put in a 20 dB offset into my noise floor trace and then scale up to that. So I'll press the T key to switch to my noise floor trace, and then I'll click over here, plus 20. And now I have a target, right? This uh, red line. So let me start the generator again, and I'll start turning up the noise. Okay, so at zero dB, we're still not all the way above the noise floor. So if I needed to get um, 20 dB above the noise floor to get maximum coherence down here in say 40, 30 hertz, then I either need a much quieter room with no cars driving by, um, or I need a lot more signal. And one trick to do that without blowing out your ears and those of your colleagues is to choose a um, band past pink noise. So this pink noise below 200 hertz um, is a lot less intense on your ears um, and allows you to turn up a little bit more when you're just learning, uh, looking at low frequencies. Now, I would have to reset my preamp gains, right, because I'm already maxed out there. But it's just good to know that you can do that if you're just really interested in looking at low frequencies, if you really need to know if your cardioid subwoofer array is working at 30 hertz, I need to look at those measurements down there. Okay, so I'm gonna have to turn it up more. Let me go ahead and turn on pink noise below 200 hertz so I can leave it on for a while while I adjust it. Anyway, we've done our basic measurements here to find out what level we need to be at to just get above the noise floor and then what level we need to be at to be 20 dB above the noise floor for maximum coherence. So let me reset our noise floor trace back down to zero and take a look at this. So just to review again, red was our noise floor. Orange, we got above the noise floor all the way down to at least 100 hertz, maybe down to even 50. And then yellow is our trace that gives us a really healthy 20 dB above the noise floor measurement. And that's the one I'm going to try and use most of the time as long as it's not bothering people. But the reason that I wanted to show you this is that you have options if you are in a place where there's lots of other people working at the same time. Okay, so you could have it on this level where it's barely even noticeable. Okay, mix in some music, maybe nobody knows it's there. 
then when people aren't there or you're not going to be bothering people, go ahead and bring it up to this level so you can make sure that you're always getting really good coherence. But let's take a look at what that looks like over here in the transfer function. So I set, reset to pink noise. Let's go back down to where we started at minus 20. Okay, so here we are at minus 20 dB. Okay, so a coherence is not bad, right? It's uh, up here above 80%. So it looks like we're into probably 80 to 90%. Um, so for some problems in this area that are probably reflections anyway, right? Uh, and then definitely not down here below 50 hertz. So let's see what happens when we go up to say minus 12 dB and then all the way up to zero. Great, now we can see our blue trace in the background is minus 20 dB and now I can start turning it up and I'll stop talking and we'll look at the coherence of our live trace and see how it improves as I turn up the um, signal generator. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but past 12 dB, I didn't really start to see any improvements. And it's also starting to bother my ears a little bit in the room. I'm standing right behind the speaker. So this is going to be an opportunity for me to um, use that below 200 hertz measurement. Okay, and let's actually zoom into the low frequencies. I'm going to turn my measurement back on. I'm going to go back down to minus 12 and actually save that so then we can see if we get any improvements above minus 12. Cool, so here is my saved trace of, and then I need to turn on the display coherence. So below 200 hertz at minus 12 dB. So now let's start turning up the signal generator and see if I can get any improvements. Cool, so we did actually see some improvements there. Um, let me turn on the coherence for our fourth trace here. So check that out. So here we are at, what was this, minus 12, and then here we are at zero. So if we really needed to be taking a look at 40 and 30 hertz, then yeah, we would need to turn it up, get it above the noise floor, basically keep turning it up until the coherence stopped improving, right? This is the ultimate message of this movie, I guess, uh, this video is that um, another way to figure this out with all the, without all those steps is basically if you have the ability to and you're in a room where you're not going to bother people, just keep turning it up until uh, coherence stops improving. Once coherence stops improving, then it's not going to really benefit you at all to turn up the signal on the room. But I just wanted to demonstrate that um, it can be tricky uh, to get it loud enough to really surpass the noise floor at all frequencies, even when I'm at this close range, okay? And that's because I have cars driving by outside, like things around 30 and 40 hertz that um, I can't really even notice, um, but the measurement microphone definitely does. And here we saw a pretty big improvement in coherence in this area. So just to review, um, how loud does your test signal need to be in the room when you're using sat live? Well, you need to know what your noise floor is. And then you, at minimum, need to get above the noise floor. And then if you want maximum coherence, 
then you need to be 20 dB above the noise floor, okay? And we saw that in our spectrum view there in the FFT analyzer. And then we also saw the results in our coherence here in the transfer function. Um, so if you guys have any tips for me about how to get the best signal in the room for taking measurements, please comment below this video. Um, and if you have any more questions from this, let me know. Thanks. Sound design. Live.